Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on these lectures. Uh, we're going to go over lecture chat over chapter four. Um, now, just a quick note. Uh, if you have the fifth edition of the book, you don't have to listen to anything else that I say, because you're obviously looking at the chapters as they're being presented. If you have the fourth edition of the book or any previous editions, then you need to pay attention to this. And here's why. So what Tro did, the author of the book did, um, what he did was in the fourth edition, he's going, he combined chapters four and chapters five. Now, as we start talking about chapters four and chapters five, uh, you'll see that it's very, very, very similar to each other. Um, and so, but what he did in the fifth edition was he separated them. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate them, but they're going to be very close to each other. Right. And so as we go through chapter five, we're going to look at a lot of things, uh, especially a lot of the balancing equations and, and different uh, types of calculations that we're doing here, going to be doing here in chapter four. And so I just wanted to give you guys the heads up in case you do have the fourth edition um, that, that, that we're going to cover stuff that's going to be at the beginning of the chapter now, uh, which is the whole chapter in um, chapter four. Uh, we are going to talk about one slightly different type of chemical equation at the end of the chapter after we do our calculations, um, just to give you guys the heads up about them uh, and, and about the, what, the way they work. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So at the end of chapter three, we talked about how to balance equations. Um, and it's going to be very interesting or very important for us to remember how to balance equations. Uh, if, if you're looking for how to balance equations in your chapter three of your book, they're not gonna be there. But if you look at the first part of chapter four, that's where balancing equations are. And it does a very, your book does a very nice walkthrough, kind of like what I did at the end of chapter three uh, on how to balance equations. We're gonna go through it again um, as we continue to talk about these equations, uh, these chemical equations and these, these maths, that the, the math that we're gonna have to do because a balanced equation is where it's going to start, right? And so we have to be sure that we can balance our equations. Now, remember, the, rule, the only rule of balancing equations, there's only one, and that's you balance oxygens last, right? Oxygens, will, you, we should always balance oxygens last. Um, we're going to do some math. Uh, this is part one of chapter four. In part two of chapter four, we're going to do a little bit more math. Um, of pretty much all of the math that's going to be in chapter four. We're going to do it in part two because um, it's all very similar. And so when we do that, we're going to, again, practice. And I'm going to show you another shortcut, if you will, on how to maybe easily uh, balance some equations. And so why do we care about balancing equations, right? Why should we balance equations? Because that's the question. Well, we should balance equations because the relationship within the equation is shown through that balance, through, through a balanced equation, right? And what do I mean by that? And we'll look at, a, at an example of this, is the number, the coefficients in the front of each of the elements or the molecules of a balanced equation tells us how much, how many moles of that compound is in that equation right? The, the, the relative amounts, right? So we need two moles of this reacts with one mole of this. Um, and it gives us two moles of that and, and three moles of this, right? And so we can balance, we have to have that balanced equation. So we can look at those relationships. Once we have those correct relationships, we can use stoichiometry to help us see some of these relationships come out right? And, and how we can use these calculations. And so let's look at a, a two, we're going to look at two equations. We're going to look at two equations that I have on the board here. The first equation details what's known as a combustion reaction. And this combustion reaction is looking at octane. So the C8H18 plus oxygen gas, right? So when we combust something, we have to use oxygen gas. If we don't have oxygen, then the thing that we're going to try to combust will not work. So let's go ahead and let's look at this equation. So we have our octane, we have our oxygen. The products of a combustion reaction are always CO2 gas, 
and water. You, you always get those. There might be some other stuff depending on what we're being, what's being combusted, but, but it's usually CO2 and, and water vapor. So this is a balanced equation. And you can see some of those coefficients and you're thinking, holy moly, absolutely. A, a combustion reaction is one of the trickiest equations to balance. Um, and, and we might show you maybe at the end of, of, of this chapter how to do it. I tend to stay away from them just because they are uh, sometimes so time consuming. But what I wanna show you, and what's important, is we talked about the molar ratio, right? The stoichiometry, the relationship. So we know if we combust two moles of octane, how many moles of CO2 gas do we produce? That's right, we produce 16 moles, right? So for every two moles of this we combust, we produce 16 moles of carbon dioxide gas. We produce 18 moles of water vapor. So what I want you guys to think about is, is let's think about this. What if we had four moles of octane? What if we had four moles of octane? I want you to think about how many moles of CO2 and how many moles of water we would be able to produce from four moles of octane. That's correct. We would produce double. So 32 and 36, right? And so we can use these moles in, in, in what's known as a molar ratio. Right, and, and just like we can look within a compound. So the, the last question on your quiz of chapter three dealt with this type of calculation, right? Using a molar ratio to help determine the amount of something. So let's look at this equation right here. So this is what happens during photosynthesis, right? So plants take carbon dioxide gas, they mix it with a little bit of water through the energy from the sun. They produce oxygen gas, right? We like that. We breathe that. And then it produces sugar. So let's say we have thirty-seven, and, and we're not going to do necessarily the math. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start looking at how to solve these problems. We're gonna look at more detail, like writing everything out on how to solve this problem. But this is one of the ways that we can use stoichiometry to help us calculate some of these problems. And there's a little bit of a glare and I apologize, but there's 37.8 grams of CO2. And we wanna know how many grams of sugar are produced. Right, And so the reason why we need a balanced equation, and, and I'm just telling you guys about the importance of a balanced equation, and we, we'll come back to this, and then in part number two, where we'll actually go ahead and calculate this. But this is where we need, because what we need to do is figure out from what's the relationship between CO2 and sucrose, or glucose, excuse me, glucose, C6H12O6. Right, and, and the relationship is, and, and again, we're, we're gonna start seeing this the more that we use these equations is, well, I know that six moles of CO2 produce one mole of the glucose, right? So, and what we're gonna do is eventually, within our train tracks, is we're gonna start using these relationships, right? We're gonna start using these relationships. And so it's very important to know how to balance a chemical equation for this very reason. Because you can imagine if we don't have a balanced chemical reaction, then our relationships will be slightly off. Okay, they won't be slightly off, they will be very off. So using these relationships, what are some of the things that we're gonna calculate? And so this will be the end of part one, the beginning of part two. So let's go ahead and look.
So stoichiometry allows us to calculate some things. And there's three main things that we're going to look at here that we're going to then calculate in uh, part two. We're going to go through all of the math um, along with, again, maybe some practice on balancing equations. Looking at that photosynthesis again to, to calculate this. Um, it allows us to calculate, well, obviously, how much product can we produce from a reactant, right? So just like that, how from we have this much CO2, how much glucose can we produce? It also will allow us, let's say we have two differing amounts of reactant, right? The stuff on the left of the equation, and I forgot to explain that. So the stuff to the left of a chemical equation is known as the reactants. These are the things that are reacting to do um, the chemistry. The things to the right of the arrow are known as products. Those are the things formed in a chemical reaction. So what we can calculate is the limiting reactant. So let's say we have more than one reactant and we have two amounts of it. What we're gonna be able to do, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do, is what will lead to the least amount of product produced. That will be known as a limit, limiting reactant or limiting reagent because that one's gonna be used up first, right? And so you can only make that much. And then we're going to talk about theoretical yield, right? Based on the limiting reagent, how much can we actually produce? And then we're going to actually talk about actual yield, right? And the percent yield uh, that we would get theoretical versus uh, what actually occurs in the lab. Because not every reaction is 100% efficient. And so I just want to introduce this topic to you guys for chapter four. We're going to go through the math uh, in part number two. And so, um, and, and again, practice makes per perfect practice makes perfect and so we need to practice these concepts we need to do some of the problems uh, I am here to help you we'll cover some of these in the lab as well so we're able to get practice there